and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle and I am so excited to be here today. I'm actually recording this episode completely unintentionally. I'm actually late, no surprise, but it's Diwali today and Diwali is the a celebration in like the Hindu religion and my culture where we celebrate. It's kind of like a new year. It's a reset. Um, it goes along with the new moon. And so today is a new moon. Well, I think tomorrow is a new moon, but it is in sync with the new moon. And it's all about a new year, welcoming in prosperity, honoring um, just abundance and I didn't even plan to record this episode specifically today. I already had this episode idea, which is if you're manifesting money, listen to this. Just some reminders, some perspectives on money energy that I wanted to share with you. And I find it so special. I'm like, my hair is kind of done for the Bali. I still have to like do my makeup and stuff. Um, after this, I'm going to go to my parents' house. We're going to celebrate the Bali with my family and Tom's family. And it's so special to me because I, this is totally not related to money, by the way. However, I promise I will get into that. But Diwali just feels so special to me because my parents, we didn't grow up celebrating that much. We did all of like the Indian and Hindu holidays and festivals, but that's kind of it. And so when I was kind of growing up and visualizing my life moving forward, I always wanted to celebrate the volley with my future husband and his family and just make it a big celebration. And I find it so special because Tom is obviously not Indian. And I was so nervous if Diwali would be important to us and if we would celebrate the volley. It was important to me, but I didn't know what it would look like. And now what it looks like is literally something I couldn't even imagine. I could not have fathomed. I could not have put it, pictured it more beautiful. So we all go to my mom's house. She cooks up a bunch of Indian food or caters it if she's not in the mood to cook. Um, we do rangoli, which is if you are not familiar on the Bali, um, you just make like really pretty designs and decorate your house with different patterns, whether it's powder based or rice based. And it's just like a way to welcome in the goddess of abundance, which is Lakshmi. And so it's just to make your home attractive for her to kind of stop by is what I was told growing up. I think every family has their own beliefs and own reasons. However, I find it so special because like we decorate the house, my parents put up lights and everything, and then my in-laws also come. So they all wear their Indian clothes. They have a couple of outfits and we just all celebrate together. We do Diwali puja. We eat food together. We do fireworks and some little sparklers and everything. And my niece and nephew are there and it is just like so magical. I feel like for me, it is probably the equivalent of what most people in like the United States feel about like Christmas and holiday season. That is how I feel about Diwali. I just find it to be just like the most heartwarming, beautiful kind of celebration because it's something I grew up with. So it's so nostalgic. And also it is just so cool to me because I get to celebrate that with my husband, his family, even though they're not Indian, they are so in it and they are so respectful, but they also have so much fun with it. And it is just the coolest thing um, ever. So I love it. And it's so funny because I was just learning as always more about the Bali and different people's takes on the Bali. And it's all about abundance. And I had to record this episode today. So I just feel like it is meant to be. So Talking about money, um, this is why you're here. This is why you're listening to this episode. You did not sign up for a little masterclass on the volley, but thank you for staying if you're still here. So talking about money, one thing that I have been really just observing, honestly, I am such an observant person in my personal life, in my own social life. Like Tom and I have a very, very busy um schedule I guess to say like we have things happening almost every weekend night and then almost every weekday night we are whether it's seeing family whether it's seeing friends whether it's seeing colleagues whether it's seeing like potential clients whatever it is um we actually have a really busy schedule and the thing I've been really picking up on is everybody's money mindset it has just been so glaring to me it has been so prevalent to me that money is a complex and 
yet important subject in every single person's life and the way people approach it and the way people interact with it the way people talk about it is so different like everyone has such a unique way of experiencing money energy and it's just been so interesting to observe like what resonates with me what doesn't what kind of triggers me all of it and that's where I wanted to really share this episode talk about money more because I feel like I am so open about every area of my life. I'm so open about my soulmate. I'm about, I'm open about like my business and my dream job and I'm open about manifesting our dream home. But the one area I'm a little reserved in and honestly, because I'm scared is money. I get so nervous of the pushback I might receive because I know how triggering of a subject money is. I know that if I say act as if you had a million dollars, someone would be like, well, I don't. And do I just go into credit card debt? Like I just get nervous and like in anticipation frustrated of some of the pushback I might get for like the smart asses. I'm so sorry for cussing on social media. Not that you guys do this. This is not my audience and you guys in my community is so loving and so just socially aware and spiritually aware and so conscious. I'm not even worried about it from that perspective. I just, it's a personal insecurity that I get nervous about. Like, wow, I know I'm going to trigger people with my money mindset. I'm going to trigger people with my beliefs around money and people are going to think I don't believe it. All of these things or that it's not real, whatever. Like I am just nervous. And this is me kind of getting out of my comfort zone a little bit and starting to talk more and more about money. Um, I don't want it to be the only thing I talk about, but learning that like I have friends in and family in so many different, um, layers and different walks of life. Some people are making six figures and living in big cities and are unhappy. Some people are making like bare minimum working minimum wage, maybe working like, um, an hourly job and are so happy. And then in between, And then I have people who are just working to make money and not living. And it's just brought up so many emotions, so many thoughts for me that I just wanted to share some perspectives to help you along the way if you are manifesting money, if you are focused on money. And I would really love after you listen to this episode or while you listen to this episode, please share with me like what comes up in your mind about money. I would love to have some conversations in my DMs about this because. I am just like, I think I need like validation and I need support from you as to what do you need help with with money and like what are you looking for or what comes up in your life and how can I help you better? So I would just love to hear if any of this resonates with you or if it doesn't resonate with you and how I can help you further on your money journey. Because one thing that I know when I was manifesting money, like when I really was like, okay, I like need a salary and I need money. Um, The hardest thing and the most annoying thing was that I felt like I needed to spend money to receive money. And to an extent, I do think that's true. I think if you're trying to learn a specific skill like energy exchange, but it was also just like, that's so unfair and I think that's wrong. And so my first kind of perspective If you feel frustrated that anyone who's teaching you to manifest money is asking for money and that feels so contradictory and frustrating and you feel kind of helpless in the cycle, what I want to say to you is the most I've dealt with my relationship with money and it's evolved so much over the years. You guys have seen it evolve. Maybe not sure if you've noticed it, but like there was a phase in my life where I wanted the showy glam money. I was not very showy with it on social media. However, it was the way I talked about it. So I'm not sure if you noticed. However, I wanted like the first class travel. I wanted to stay in the super fancy hotels. And granted, like there's nothing wrong with that. So all of that, like notice where your mind goes at, like, this is bad. This is good. I think there's nothing bad about money except our labels that we put on it. So I think our relationship with money evolves over time with what money actually means to us and what we're trying to buy with money. And then going another layer deeper, why do we want that? 
And what I learned is that so much of my money desires were not rooted in me actually wanting the actual item, right? Or wanting the actual experience, say luxury travel, or um, I don't know, some people like designer bags, right? Or a fancy car. So the material stuff didn't matter nearly as much as why I wanted the material stuff. And Some of the times I wanted the material thing, the material thing that money would buy me because it was actually a desire in my own, or sometimes I wanted it because I thought it would make me come off a certain way, or I thought it would make me feel more worthy or more confident or more successful. And those are the little nuances that only you can answer for yourself. And that will really shift the way you work with money because most of the time when we start manifesting money, we're like, oh, I want to manifest money so I can travel. I want to manifest money so I don't have to work. I want to manifest money for very um, valid, yet very, we only know like one layer of it, but the more and more deeper you dive, the more you realize like money isn't, you're not chasing money. You are chasing a feeling. You are probably chasing a feeling of success. You are probably chasing a feeling of abundance. You are probably chasing a feeling of limitlessness. And coming back to my initial point was that we feel frustrated on our manifesting money journeys because we have to pay someone to teach us and we don't have money. The number one thing that has made me feel the most abundant, and I have experienced a lot of abundance and spent money on very expensive things and have seen a lot of big numbers in my bank account. And I'm not saying this to brag. I honestly get so uncomfortable saying these types of things because I don't know, just old programming in my opinion. Um, But the most abundant I've ever felt consistently is in nature. And I know I know that you might not want to hear this. I know it's kind of annoying and it's like, okay, pile, tell me to go on a walk. No, I'm talking about like scenes and looking at nature and understanding nature in a way where you're like, holy crap, nature is abundant. And it has just shifted my paradigm to the max. I've I think I've talked about this before, but there was one time in particular nature literally brought me to tears and it was when me and Tom were in Seattle and it was like, I saw this postcard and I had it on my vision board, but I didn't know where it was. We went to Seattle and I saw a postcard and it was Mount Rainier, which is like the biggest volcano or something in Seattle area. And then it had a field of really beautiful flowers, all these wildflowers with the snow capped mountain, or I think it's a volcano technically, but It was just the prettiest scene. And then I finally found out like where it was and when to go to see those flowers and driving up that mountain, walking through those flower fields. And I was sobbing. I was sobbing. I was like, this is nature. She just exists. This is abundance. This comes back every year. This is always there. And that transformation for me was the beginning of my journey of understanding that nature is abundance and you're not searching for money when you're trying to manifest money. So if you feel like you can't understand, you can't tap into the feeling of money without paying for something, nature is free. Nature is always existing. You don't have to go somewhere scenic, look at the flowers in your backyard and turn off the noise and just look at them. When you kind of just like grasp the fact that these flowers are blooming and they're beautiful and they're so fragrant and there are so many different hundreds of thousands of types of flowers or when you see like your basil in your herb garden growing or vegetables if you have vegetables growing or you see trees and you look at those leaves and you just look with a little bit more awareness than what we typically do in our day-to-day lives you will see how much abundance there honestly is and you can start to connect to that feeling there's always enough and you can start to really connect with how do you actually show up with money versus how do we actually show up with nature and what are the differences because we have so much to learn from nature and the way that there is always enough it is still it is just so much like grace. And I think when I look at my relationship with money, it is the opposite of grace. It is the opposite of gentle. It is so rigid. It is so stress filled. It is so anxiety filled versus nature is not that nature is not anxious. Nature is not stressed out. Nature is not desperate. 
And you can really start to draw parallels and really connect with money just by looking at nature and letting your mind wander and looking at nature through a conscious, aware, spiritual lens. It has changed my life. I'm not just telling you to go on a walk and like think that you're manifesting money by going on a walk. I'm telling you to like let your mind wander and ponder about how magnificent it is and notice those feelings that come up. Maybe it's going to a certain scene. Like for me, rivers and water are always huge, specifically rivers. Um, Oh my gosh, I got a tattoo. So, okay, if you're on the video, oh God, I can't even. I will post a picture, but I got a tattoo finally. Um, We got it for Tom and I have always wanted. Well, he already has tattoos. I've never had a tattoo. I have piercings. Like I have my nose pierced. I have lots of ear piercings, but I've always wanted a tattoo. And the initial like base of my symbol of the tattoo was a river because Abraham Hicks always says, and there's so many analogies of rivers and spirituality, and it has always inspired me because it's one of the most tangible things I've experienced where when you put your foot in a river or your hand in the river, you can feel the current and you can feel if you relax, you can feel yourself go downstream, which is with the flow. Or if you kind of hold your hand, you can feel the current go against your hand and that's upstream or you're trying to swim against the current um, that's upstream and that's living life through resistance. And that like analogy, but also being able to physically feel the resistance versus the flow in a river um, was just such a full circle moment for me. And so I wanted like the squiggly line to represent the river. I've always been obsessed with lotuses you see it in my branding um but I also am like lotuses are so basic and everyone likes lotuses and I was like you know what it's been something in my life since I can remember I used to paint lotuses all the time and it's always been such a symbol for me so I was like even if it's basic fine but I incorporated the lotus and then chakras as you know are very important to me as well and I love dots so I have like three dots three cute little non-dot kind of paisley shape that looks like mandy or henna if you're familiar with it and then a seventh dot so it's kind of like the river flow upstream the seven chakras lotuses and just a lot of spiritual symbolism that's important to me on my journey and kind of reminds me from where i've come but also where i'm going and so such a long tangent but let yourself feel um let yourself feel the abundance when you go into nature wherever inspires you but give yourself the time to really reflect you'll be surprised what you learn if you can quiet down so that's my kind of first point if you are manifesting money wow that was me talking for 20 minutes oh my gosh i have literally that wasn't even a point on my list but Oh, well, intuitive podcasting. Here we go. So one thing I wanted to share with you is if you are manifesting money, um, interesting. I have talked about this a little bit on the podcast before, but like time has been an interesting concept for me. I've noticed there's a lot of moments in my life where I feel like I'm rushing or I'm constantly waiting for that one perfect moment and just understanding time has been so interesting to me. And I read, I think it was in a book and it blew my mind um, where I know impatience is very normal on the manifestation journey. We get impatient. We want our desires to show up right then and there. And one thing that absolutely blew my mind is when you are patient, you are acting out. When you are patient, you are acting out of abundance because in that moment, you are aware that you have more than enough time practicing impatient or when you're in a vibration of impatience, you are not on the same vibration as abundance. That is lack. That is impermanence. That is that I'm running out of time. And so when it comes to manifesting money, it's not only how you interact with money, it's how you show up in every other layer of your life. That is my whole philosophy with manifesting as a lifestyle. So this one really blew my mind because I'm already really working on my relationship with time. So when I kind of understood that abundance is patience, I was like, wow, I have so many opportunities in my life to practice patience in my day to day. And that is an act of me practicing abundance. And 
I don't know if it's as profound for you, but that was one of the most profound things I've heard this entire year. Like it blew my mind and I am so not joking. So if you're noticing that you're feeling impatient, whether it's about money, whether it's about any other desire, remind yourself like impatience is on the same wavelength as lack, which is the opposite of abundance, the opposite of money, the opposite of limitlessness. So give yourself permission to practice patience. By practicing patience, you are practicing aligning with the energy of money, the energy of abundance. So I thought that was a really, really beautiful reminder. And it's worked beautifully for me. I think um, it's so funny how quick things can change, even in your relationship with money. And when you give yourself permission to not fall into that same cycle as you usually would and just pause and be like, I'm going to react, I'm going to act differently than I usually would, it makes a difference. It causes a ripple effect. It is a ripple effect. It is like a one millisecond pause to consciously choose a different stream of thought or a different action or a different perspective and it creates a ripple. So don't underestimate the pro- the smallness of little tiny shifts because those little tiny shifts seriously add up, especially with money. An example for me is like I was doing some stuff and I was like, dang, like things aren't going as well as I wanted in regards to money. And then I was like, I usually get into like a very anxious thought pattern. And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of that. I don't want to feel anxious. Let me just accept. Let me just be like, okay, maybe another day. And I kid you not, that one little choice, the next day I hit those income goals, I hit those business goals, and it's taken me a long time to hit that. And all that shifted was a teeny bit of my perspective and the decision to kind of keep moving forward. So it is powerful how quickly it can shift when you practice a teeny bit of patience and really start to play with that relationship between time and money. I think in our society, it's like the only thing that we don't have enough of is time, but it's also the flip side is that time is a man-made construct in the scale of the universe. So very interesting concepts, very kind of complicated. You get to pick which one aligns with you more, um, but that really, really helps me. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is just playing with your money identity. I kind of circling back to what I was starting to talk about when we first started this episode, I've been observing just so many people and so many different walks of life and the their relationship with money and why they want money is so kind of dominant to portray a certain image. It is social status. It is I want people to think I'm successful. I want people to think I'm classy or bougie. I want people to think I am good, right? It is such like a self-perception thing. So actually understanding your money identity and your identity in regards to money and then your relationship with money in regards to your identity, it is a two-way street and playing with like, what is it that you want more money for? Why do you want it? And what's it going to do? Um, and some questions that I've been asking myself even, it's like, do I want money to show someone? Do I want money to feel a certain way about myself? And most of the times it is to feel a certain way about myself or to hope I can, um, other people can feel a certain way about me. I've done a lot of work around this. So actually that is not the case for me anymore. But when I look back, that were, those were the two biggest things. It was, I wanted to feel a certain way about myself. I wanted to feel successful. I wanted to feel worthy. I wanted to feel like I made it or, um, I wanted other people to know that I've made it or to feel, or to get a sense that I had made it. I wanted other people to be like, wow, she's impressive. This is so shallow and it's embarrassing, honestly, to admit that to yourself, but do it. Like your money relationship cannot heal and cannot change until you're willing to actually admit that part of why money is so important to you. So have fun with your relationship with money. I know this kind of became such a tangent. I hope it was interesting for you. And some takeaways just to recap, nature is a free, completely free place where you can really practice your relationship and connection with money practicing patience, 
is a form of practicing abundance and tapping into abundance. And then also playing with your money identity and what it is that money means to you and why is it important and is it for other people or is it for you? If no one was watching, if nobody was looking at your money or your relationship with money, would it be different? Probably or maybe. So I want you to just ponder on your relationship with money and be gentle with yourself because most of us are not actually seeking money. We are seeking either material experiences that we want because everyone has told us it's going to make us happier or it's our definition of success, or we are seeking a feeling of worthiness, of success, of I have enough and I am free and I don't have to stress. But I will tell you firsthand that your the problems that we think money will solve it will take away some stress but then a different level a different paradigm of stresses will come up so yes basic stresses might go away if you do have money um you might not have to worry about where your food is coming from or where electricity is coming from but then a different type of problem might come up so money will not necessarily solve all of your problems, it might solve some, but it might not solve all of them. And I think having the awareness that money doesn't magically make everything better um, is so powerful because one thing I know was not prepared for having more money than I could have ever thought was seeing other people who have a lot of money and what they do with it and how they show up in the world and the amount of disappointment and sadness that creates in me. Um, that was really hard for me to actually process. And it's something that nobody can teach you. You have to experience it on your own. And I know me saying that money isn't going to solve all your problems is not going to make you not want to manifest money. I want you to manifest money. I think it's your birthright. I think you deserve it. However, I just hope I can prepare you for the fact that it might not solve everything you're hoping for it to solve. And that's not a bad thing. But I hope it can equip you to realize that like you can handle anything that comes your way. And it's so much bigger than money. It is so much bigger than having a million dollars or having the financial freedom you've always longed for. Like life is meant to be lived and it's not meant to be working away just to get a paycheck so you can live. Like that is not the way we are designed to live life. Like There is so much more than money. There is so much other energy that we can get excited about, like creativity, like passion, like purpose that trumps money. Um, And it's easy for me to say because I have made the money that I thought I needed. And so now it's easy for me to look back in hindsight, but just sharing it forward. Some people this might click with, maybe you're like, no, I want to also experience the money and then have my own lessons from it. So Whatever you want to do with your money relationship going forward, I wish you the best. I wish you only more and more abundance to be used to raise your vibration as well as the planets and to be used for good. You know, it only takes a small percentage of people to do good in the world to actually make a ripple effect. So I know you're part of that. I love you and thank you for being here. Happy manifesting money and happy Diwali. Happy holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy all of it. I know Thanksgiving is until next week, but just I love you and I will talk to you.